Hello and welcome back to another FL Studio 20 Basics video. I'm Michael and today we're going to be talking all about automation. So I'm going to spend a little bit of time explaining what it is, then I'm going to show how to automate any parameter in FL Studio, any parameter on a third party plugin, and we're also going to be going into some detail about different types of automation, different sorts of curves you can apply, how to copy and paste automations and all of that good stuff. So let's just get straight into it. So I have a project open here just for demonstration. It's got two bass lines and some drums looping around. And to quickly explain this for anyone who doesn't know what automation is at all, automation lets you control parameters inside a software. So the parameter could be a fader, it could be a pan, it could be an amount of reverb, it could be anything really. And the automation lets you control it automatically. So say for instance, I wanted to increase the volume of the drums in the second half of the pattern. Instead of manually pushing up the fader like this, I could instead assign an automation clip to the fader which pushes it up automatically. So that's the kind of basic principle here. This could be a fader, it could be a pan, it could be a mute button, any parameter inside FL Studio can be automated. The first thing you have to do is make sure that you have a section of your song highlighted for where you want the automation to be. The next thing to do is to select the thing you want to automate, in this case it's going to be a volume fader here on the drums, you're going to right click, scroll down to create automation clip. And then you can see that this automation clip has been added into the playlist. If I open up the channel rack and go to the automation folder, it's also been added in here. An automation clip will initially start as just a flat line. This line has a value that matches up with the value of this fader. So if I create a point by right clicking and drag this point up, the fader will move up as well. And if I drag it down, the fader will move down as well. The great thing about this is that it will control it for you. If I make another point by right clicking, I can have it gradually increase in volume like this. I'm going to quickly name and color this automation clip just to keep it a little bit more organized. And I'm also going to group it with the track above by just right clicking on it and pressing G. As I said earlier, what I'd like to happen is I'd like to increase the volume in the second part of this pattern. So I'm going to right click on a point and delete it. And then I'm going to talk about how to create and delete these points. At any time, you can just right click to create a point, And then you can simply click and drag these points around. If you hold Alt while you have a point selected, you can move it fluidly. If you hold Control, it will only move up and down. And if you hold Shift, it will only move side to side. There's all sorts of different types of points you can choose. So if you right click again, you can have it be sort of like a double curve like this. You can have it be a hold point, which simply just moves up and down like this. You can also turn them into pulses or waves. And there's loads of different possibilities here, but we're gonna keep it really simple. And I'm just gonna delete these points and go back to the smooth points. So to make the drums step up in volume, I'm just going to create a point, make it a smooth point, and I'm just going to do that. This will increase the volume so that here is louder than here. If I want to have an exact value on this point, I can push up the fader to the value that I want it to go to. I can right click and select copy value, and then I can paste the value in here so that it's exactly what I want it to be. Let's take a look at this and see what's happening. And this process works the same for all parameters inside FL Studio. It could be a mix amount on an EQ. It could even be a parameter inside an EQ moving up and down. Absolutely any parameter inside FL Studio can be automated. So let's look at third party plugins. So in this case, I'm going to go to the baseline, which is created inside Serum. I'm going to my effects and I'd like to turn up the reverb amount. So if I right click on this, there's no automation button here like there is in FL Studio. All I have to do is left click and you know give it a little bit of a wiggle so that FL Studio knows what I want to control. Then I'm gonna come up to this button here and I'm gonna right click on it and select high bass, verb wet, create automation clip. And now if I look here, another one's been created. And if I move one of these points up, you can see that it's controlling the mix dial on the reverb. So now I'm just gonna create another point and I'm going to have that just steadily increase in reverb until it gets to here. Again, it's good to sort of color and organize these as you go. 
So now we've looked at how to have a little bit of control over automation clips and how to automate FL Studio plugins and third party plugins. What I'm going to do now is show how to copy across automation. So when the drums increase in volume, I would also like the low bass line to increase in volume too. So what I'm going to do is create an automation clip for the low bass, just like that. I'm going to organize the project a little bit. So I'm just going to auto color the group and I'm going to rename it. And now to copy the automation clip from here, I'm going to double click on it. And then I'm going to open this spanner icon here or this tool, tool wrench thing. And I'm going to select copy state. Now I'm going to close it. I'm going to double click on the low base one. I'm going to click on there, paste state. And you can see that it's pasted it in identically. The very last thing that I wanted to show is that you can control the range of how far the automation clip sort of controls things. So I'll, I'll explain a little bit better right now. Basically, if you double click, double left click on the automation clip, there's a minimum and a maximum value here. So right now, the bottom here takes you all the way to minus infinity on the fader and the top here takes you to plus 5.6 dB. But say I only wanted to go between minus 10 and plus two, so that I didn't want here to be all the way at the bottom. What you can do is you can change the minimum value. And now if I scroll all the way to the bottom, it's only at minus 11. And if I change the maximum value, going all the way to the top only takes me to 0 0.8. This might not sound very useful, but when you're automating the volume of vocals, for instance, and you don't want to increase something uh, greatly, you just want really subtle control, it's good if a little change like this only increases something by half a dB or a single dB, for instance. So this maximum and minimum value becomes really important when you're doing really fine detailed work. If your automation clips are no longer needed, you can go to the channel rack, go to the automation, and you can delete them from here. And then when they're deleted, you just want to go into your current project, patterns, initialize controls, and also delete it from here. And that way it's completely gone from your project. So that's really all there is to automation in FL Studio. Please get really creative with it. You don't have to just automate faders and reverbs. You can automate absolutely anything. So get creative with it, have a lot of fun. And thank you very much for watching. Hope to see you in the next video. Bye for now. It's time.